I guess it's just, uh, I mean, you always say Lions fans are super loyal. If you're a true blue Lions fan you've, and you've been there for a long time, you know what it means to be loyal. It's the connections you make, the people you meet. I have a whole family of Lions fans that I see every Sunday. And so I wanted it to showcase our pride, our group of friends and family. So it's Superman's pride, football is family. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Total Michigan, where we interview ordinary people doing some pretty extraordinary things. I'm your host, Clifford Duvinois. So today, we're once again up in God's country, up in the UP. And we're talking about one of those staples up here that if you, when you come to the UP, you absolutely should come to, because there's such a compelling story that's behind it. And today, we're talking with Megan Stefanski. From the Uperman Bar and Grill. Megan, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm doing awesome. Thank you for asking. So before we jump into the interview, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the Uperman Bar and Grill is? Um, it's my family restaurant in Gatesville, Michigan. It was formerly the Gatesville Bar for I don't know, probably 50 or 60 years, I'd say. My parents bought it in 2011. And turned it into Uperman's um, based off of my dad's nickname, being a super fan, the Detroit Lions. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk a lot more about that. What kind of food do you serve there? We serve a little bit of everything um, from burgers, fresh fish, uh, prime rib, everything. <laughs> Sandwiches and burgers are our main to-go thing in our homemade salad bar. It's the only downside to doing these types of interviews is they make me hungry. So... When you talked before, and I, I really do want to explore this, when you talked before about your, your mom and dad buying the grill, why did they do that? It's something he always wanted to do. Um, he thought it would always be fun, a good way to be oriented with the community. And he always loved to visit. He was a people person. He loved to visit with people. And my mom is an amazing cook. So she does all the cooking, all the recipes there are hers. All the soups, salads, dessert, everything's made by her homemade. Okay. Now, when your dad decided to rebrand it and call it Uperman, and it, there's a lot here to unpack, and I want to try to make sure that we go as chronologically as we can from the Uperman, it was because of why. Um, so being a super fan for the Detroit Lions, he was given the nickname Uperman. When he was inducted into the PFUFA, Pro Football Ultimate Fan Association, in 2008. And when he bought the restaurant, they were trying to think of what to call it. And I said, it's a no-brainer, Uperman's Bar and Grill. And he wasn't so sure about it, having his name on it. But people love it. And especially kids. Kids love the name of it. I've had it called everything. For example, um, when we used to sell ice cream cones, one of our local kids called it Donny Queen instead of Dairy Queen <laughs> or McDonnie's for their burgers instead of McDonald's. <laughs> nice. Now for this, and you said it was an organization of super fans. Mm -hmm. Is that yep. what that is? Talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah. So Pro Football Ultimate Fan Association um, is compromise of super fans from around the NFL um, I was inducted in 2022. My dad was in 2008. So it's great. We uh, support charity. We're all fan of fans. Um, great sportsmanship. It's nice, too, because whenever you go to visit another team, you have someone to tailgate with, someone to sit with, someone that invites you into their city, into their home. So what does it take? to become a super fan? You are given a draft card, um, usually by someone from your own team. And then you go through a good year of stuff, interviews, meeting people. They want to know that you are what they want for the organization. So in these interviews, what exactly does that entail? They want to know um, that you're welcoming to other fans, that you're a good sportsmanship, what you do for charitable activities, um, things like that. Everybody has their own organization that they support for the most part. And then as a group, we do as well. And for your dad in particular, I understand that he attended every 
single home game yes. of the Detroit Lions. Since 1994, yes. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Getting up at what time? Uh, get up about 1.32, leave at 2.30. That's awesome. Absolutely love that. Now, you're growing up in this environment. Mm-hmm. At what age did you start to take, because you also said you're a super fan. So what age right. did you start to really show an interest? Um, when I was probably 10 to 12 is when I really got into it. Um, Barry Sanders had come on the scene and football was just exciting. You know, you're that age at school where a lot of the other kids were Packer fans, you know, like Brett Favre and all that. We had Barry Sanders. We had a rivalry going on. Um, my family's idea of family vacations was Tigers and Lions games. We went to Detroit. That's what we did. <laughs> um, so that was our thing. And then in 1994, for Father's Day, my mom gave him season tickets. Ooh. So was he just buying the, the tickets like as they came up? Yeah, we that? would just go to random games, usually as a family. Um, but yeah, when she bought those season tickets, we the first game we went, me and my brother and my mom and him. And his plan was only to go to a couple games every year. And before he knew it, it's very addicting. It's very addicting. Someone would say, I'll drive. And uh, off he'd go. <laughs> now, when we talk about this, because we're talking about the Lions here, and I know that along the way that some sacrifices had to be made because you're talking about things like Thanksgiving Day, mm-hmm. right? Because the Lions always play. And, right. and Mother's Day mm-hmm. falling on Sunday and stuff. Yeah. So the season always starts, obviously, after Labor Day. Um, we always play Thanksgiving. We have a full Thanksgiving feast in the Eastern Market at our tailgate. Um, I, when I was a kid, I didn't go. Um, in high school, I would go to a few. And then from college on, we always went for Thanksgiving. He always, of course, went. He hadn't had Thanksgiving with his own mother, my grandma, in 25 years. <laughs> um, when COVID hit, I actually, she was just gleeful that I had to come to her house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I was like, how does this work? We get up, we don't eat till noon. It's at a table. It's not a, standing up in a parking lot. We watch them on TV. This is crazy. <laughs> it was a new experience. <laughs> Definitely. And it, cause I know you said, you know, you went to a couple games in high school and you're off to, to, to college. What was it that shifted for you from just going for a couple of games to actually going to every game? I was back home and could drive. So when I was in college, um, my brother and I both lived in mid-Michigan. I went to Central and he went to Alma and it was, you know, not that far. We could just meet them on I-75. The main thing, though, is my dad did not drive. He was never the driver. So someone was driving. So if you were going to the game, you were driving. <laughs> And so once I was back home, then it was a different story. You know, I was here. We'd leave from here. That's how it worked. And then you and your dad would just swap driving positions on the way down at some point. He would usually drive to West Branch. And then he was done. Um, he, uh, he liked to drink on Sundays. He always said, the lions make me drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was usually the driver or one of his friends was the driver. Certainly. Yeah. It's easy to be a fan when the team is winning. Right. But we're talking like a whole other level. You guys are actually super fans when the Lions aren't doing so good. Right. Yeah. So what is it about continuing to support the team during those lean years, I guess I say? (laughs) I guess it's just, uh, I mean, you always say Lions fans are super loyal. If you're a true blue Lions fan and you've been there for a long time, you know what it means to be loyal. But um, for me, not only do I love football, and I mean, I've watched a lot of bad football from the Lions over the years and good football, but um, it's the connections you make, the people you meet. Um, I have a whole family of Lions fans that I see every Sunday. I feel like that's a big part of it. And exploring that concept a little bit further, when you were growing up in this, you know, in mm-hmm. this environment, was that something that you, is, is it, was it just 
let's go to the games or is it more about also the people that you're with as well? Both. I mean, the people that would go to a game with us because there's four tickets. Um, I mean, that's five hours down, five hours back. You really get to know people. And it was a lot of the same people that were going every year. And it was always nice to catch up. And and then there was the people that you meet tailgating. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't enjoy it as much because at the Silver Dome, it was a whole new story back then. It was mostly men and it was rowdiness. And I can remember going to the Silver Dome where, you know, airplanes, paper airplanes flying and glass beer bottles flying over your head. And <laughs> it, Ford Field and the NFL in general are very much fan friendly, family friendly now. You see a lot of people taking kids to the games. There's a lot more women involved. Um, but what's also great is the people that go and that become your friends and your family, they're from all walks of life. I mean, I mean, there's so many of us that once you get to know each other, you're like, what do you do for a living? Where do you live? I mean, I have Lions friends, for example, this weekend coming in from Philadelphia and Dallas and London and Phoenix and uh, where else do I have some? Minnesota, all over the U.S. And we saw that in Kansas City when... Everyone was very surprised when we told them that Lions fans traveled well because I also attend all the away games. And a lot of people didn't want to believe that, especially in Kansas City. We hadn't played there in, what, 21, 22 years. And they all kept saying, oh, the, the two flights are so from Detroit. No, it's not the two flights from Detroit. Every flight from every city was chock full of Lions fans. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> so... So that's interesting. So that's something I didn't catch in your backstory. You go to the away games as well? Yes. Every one of them. Pretty much. I missed uh, one game in 2021. I oh, that was horrible. Home and away last that. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I pretty much hit them all. But I think also, too, when you're talking about season tickets, you're sitting basically next to the same people. Right. Right. All the time. So yes. you do get to really know them. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, just our section alone. So we moved to Ford Field in 2002. And we moved to the current seats. I want to say 2004 it was. We only, or it might have even been in three. We sat in different seats that first year. So we're right over the tunnel. And the people behind me, the people in front of me, the people across the aisle have become family to me. My friend Derek moved to his seats in 2016. And now, I mean, we attend a lot of away games together. He comes up every summer to support my charity. Um, the people across the aisle for me, same thing. They were here in July for my hospice benefit. Uh, the people behind me were right out of college and dating when I first met them. Now they're married with three kids. <laughs> um, I mean, you just, you really get to know people. And I would definitely, I want to explore that a little bit more, but for our audience, we're going to take a quick break to thank our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to hear more about the story behind uh, Uperman and especially what you can expect when you go there. We'll see you after the break. Hey, if you are enjoying these great interviews, just take a moment and go to totalmichigan.com slash join. And you can get these episodes sent directly to your inbox because there's a lot more great stories coming. See you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Total Michigan, where we talk to ordinary Michiganders doing pretty extraordinary things. I'm your host, Cliff Duvenois. Today, we're talking with Megan Stefanski from the Uperman uh, Bar and Grill, and we're talking pretty heavy about uh, the Lions and going to the Lions game and how this has been a family tradition for you. Um, but that kind of changed at some point. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened to your dad? Um, yeah, so... The very first week of the 2019 season, um, my dad passed away actually on the first day of school. I was, I'm a school librarian, so I was heading to school for the year. And he passed away on Tuesday, the day after Labor Day, and our first game was the following Sunday. And, I mean, it just kind of threw me for a loop. I mean, I knew the season was going to be the same, but yet I was used to going with him. So I had to kind of decide who was going to take his place on these games and how I was going to be able to handle it. Basically, it's from there. And you chose to keep going to the games. Yeah, at that point, 
I felt like it was part of me. I've been doing it for so long, I couldn't stop. And I had such close friends and family down there that I couldn't imagine not seeing them every Sunday. So why don't you talk to us about going to that that first game? Because you said he passed away on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The and very then... first game was in Arizona. So um, I had a week until we were in Detroit. And the first home game was against the Chargers. So all our Chargers friends were there. There was a big tailgate. A lot of celebrating him. A lot of sadness. Uh, the Lions created a video for him. Played it on the Jumbotron. Beautiful. Uh, the hardest part, I think, was sitting in his seat. Um, I was never allowed to sit in a seat. That was his seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now it's my seat. So sitting in that seat for the first game was hard. I bet. Now, is this, because you mentioned before the break about your charity raising money for hospice. Is, mm -hmm. this, where, is this where this came from? Yeah. So he had decided... In 2015, um, a friend's wife convinced him to do Dancing with the Stars, which here in the Sioux is a fundraiser for hospice of the UP. And while doing that, he toured the hospice house and got to see what it was all about and decided that was going to be his main charity. So we're a very charitable family and Uperman's businesses as well. If anybody needs help with something, we've hosted many fundraisers. So in 2015, we hosted our first hospice fundraiser. And so I've always helped him do that, and I've continued it since he passed away. So this last year, we actually raised $25,000 um, in one day. We have donations from everything from jars of jam, homemade wine, um, Signed Barry Sanders footballs from the Lions, everything you can imagine. People donate. We have a live auction, cornhole tournament. People just send money. It's great. You also talked before about, and I want to go back and explore this a little bit. The Lions did this video tribute to your dad on the Jumbotron. So your family is really connected with the Lions. Yeah. Yeah. They've been great to my family over the years. Um, Mrs. Ford sent my mother uh, a sympathy card when he passed away. Mrs. Ford as in Ford Field. Yes. Mrs. Martha Ford. Yes. How did that relationship with the Lions start? Um, they just know who's their true fans. They knew we was there every Sunday. I mean, the 2008 season when we went 0-16, we were there every game. Um. And, you know, you make friends in the organization. And uh, December of 2018, which was not the last game before he passed, but the game before was his, uh, it had been 25 straight years of attending games, his 200th straight game. One of the guys in the office kept telling me, we're going to do something great for him. Just wait, just wait. <laughs> and uh, so we were down on the field before the game. And then they pulled him out there to congratulate him and gave him Super Bowl tickets. So he, uh, his last NFL game he attended before he passed was Super Bowl in Atlanta. He must have been geek. Yeah, he liked it. He said the only thing better would have been if it was the Lions. But, <laughs> you know, he, yeah, so that was awesome of them. But, yeah, they're great to my family. They've sent me to the NFL draft the last couple of years. They always support my charity. They're great. They purchase copies of the book. Um I actually got a package from them last week. They mailed me a copy of my book where all the current players had signed it. Oh, beautiful. Let's take a couple of minutes and actually talk about your book. So first off, why write a book? Um, so every year when I do the hospice benefit and I'd said how all my friends come, I'm a huge thank you card person. I send thank you cards for everything. And I always include a little something in it, like a handmade bracelet I find on Etsy or lion stickers or something fun like that. Um, so I had a friend who is an illustrator, and she has a business where she helps you publish children's books. And I thought, well, this could be kind of neat. I could write a little book about dad and I and just get like 50 copies made and give them away as my thank you gifts. So that was the plan. And <laughs> as always, my plans go crazy. 
And so I hadn't even seen an actual hard copy of the book. I'd only seen it and like laid out on my iPad. And I told a few of my friends about it. Well, then they ordered it off Amazon. So I was like, well, I have to order it so I can see it first. I hope it's okay. So after people just started ordering it, I um, posted it or I put a tweet on Twitter saying, here's a little something I've been working on. And within 10 minutes, the Detroit Lions retweeted it. And we're like, so excited. Just bought several copies for our little cubs. <laughs> and then one of my friends who received it first sent me a picture of him in his lion's gear holding the book. Someone saw that and then they did it. And then someone else did it and they did it. And it just spiraled until people I, I've only met once or twice, people I've never met, um, fans from other teams. Oh, wow. Just crazy of them holding photos of the book. And so it just kind of went from there. So how many copies do you think you've sold so far? Oh, I'd say over 500 for sure. Nice. Um, after the Free Press article last week, I've sold another two, 250 of them. Like it tells this, a bit of our story and it's called Uperman's Pride, um, the lion's Hashtag and slang is one pride. Um, most people know that a pride is a group of lions, a family, a group. And so I wanted it to showcase our pride, our group of friends and family. And um, so it's Superman's pride. Football is family. Because I've always said that. We've all kind of become a large family. Everybody this year is, it just seems like they are pro lions. Mm -hmm. I mean, lions are going to do great this year. They're just going to do awesome. I can't open up my, I don't even like really subscribe that much to anything like football. So talk to me as a true fan. What are your expectations for the lions this year? How do you think they're going to do? I think we're going to have a great season, but it, and it's not even the win number. It's, People are excited again about the Lions. Like it, for years, it was who wants to go to a game? Who wants to go? Like sometimes you have to like beg people to go. And now they're begging me for tickets. And how can you hook me up? And how can we get there? And our home opener is this Sunday. And right now, their standing room tickets only available for 250 a pop, which is crazy. They've sold out of season tickets for the first time in Ford Field history. Everybody's excited. So that's the only tickets they've got left is the standing room mm -hmm, yeah. tickets. So this is the season passes all gone, regular seats all gone, yep. standing room only. Yeah, players are excited to be there. Um, we're bringing free agents in. We're bringing great coaches in. Coaches are staying that would normally leave. We're, Detroit is just going to be booming on Sunday. Ford Field is going to be so loud in there. Because when Lions fans want to be loud, we are loud. And we showed up in Kansas City and took over that stadium. That was an amazing win. And that's just the start of it. What do you think about uh, Dan Campbell? I love Dan Campbell. He wants people to think he's a meathead. He loves that. He's very smart. Dan's a good guy. Um, going back to where I said I always send thank you cards for things. Um, two drafts ago in Las Vegas, I was excited. You know, we Aiden Hutchison, local boy in the first round, and Jameson. And I always send the marketing directors and them thank you cards. And I always buy them coffee cards. Well, those of you who know Dan Campbell knows that he loves his coffee, his espressos. He's wired up. <laughs> and so I'd sent him a card and wrote, Coach, great draft. Super excited about this season. And he actually called me to personally thank me and uh, ask, you know, about how long I've been a fan and about my family and stuff like that. And I think that's why the players connect with him so much is that he cares about all of them. He's excited to be here. I mean, he played for us. I mean, and he played for us when it was very rough. <laughs> right. When we were not very good at all. And it's funny because they brought back his old jersey and it's one of the top selling jerseys. I mean, who else can say that, that they're coaches? Jersey from what 15 years ago as a top seller. And what do you think that the Lions are going to be doing differently this year than they have in the past? They've just, I mean, they've really reached out to the fans. Um, they've made the city super proud of them. Uh, everybody wants to be a part of it. The NFL draft is being held in Detroit in the next spring. It's just the excitement in the air. Everybody is excited. And for Dan Campbell, what do you think 
he's going to be thinking about going forward as far as like the team goes? What What is going to be the difference there? Just winning and having fun winning. I mean, <laughs> it, it's hard to explain for people who aren't used to going and seeing the difference. But there's just like this electricity in the air. And that's how it was Sunday, like throughout the whole game. Like any other year, people would have said SOL, same old Lions, and we would have lost that game. But it's just different now. I don't even know how to describe it unless you're used to what it's been. Like when that game was over and the players were running up to all the fans on the sidelines, like our GM, Brad, was screaming and swearing and running down the sidelines. Our president was high-fiving fans. I mean, it was just... It brings everyone together. When you have a player like, like for example, last night, C.J. Gardner-Johnson said, you know, we aren't the Motor City Kitties anymore. You know, we are villains, which Brad, our GM, had said this fall. I'm going to be known as the villain. He's like, I want everyone wearing blue ski masks Sunday, especially on defense. Amazon sold out of blue ski masks last night from Lions fans. <laughs> oh, that is I mean, incredible. Everybody's on board. It's going to be insane. By 6 a.m. in the market, it's just going to be crazy, and I can't wait. You'll just feel the electricity in the air. Uh, nice. So I guess the next question that I have for you would be this, right? Because there's all of this expectations that the Lions are just going to be great this year. And I'm not saying this because I'm necessarily a pragmatist, because I know that a lot of people handle expectations well, and other people sometimes like falter. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that they're going to have a winning year. So what makes you think that based on all the hype that's come around here? What makes you think that they're going to have a great year? Our players, they don't quit. Grit. They have grit. And they have perseverance. And I mean, I'm not saying we're going to go out and win the Super Bowl, but I see us hosting our first home playoff game at Ford Field ever, which is a big reason that season tickets sold out. People want to be there to see them finally win. I mean, it's something that people just crave. We've been waiting forever. <laughs> I mean, the last time they won the Super Bowl, it wasn't even called the Super Bowl. And that was always a joke my dad made was the last time they won was the year he was born. He always joked the next time they win would be the year he died, which didn't happen. But I mean, I have a photo of him born in December of 1957 and then at Christmas of 1957 holding a championship Detroit Lions football in front of a Christmas tree. So your dad even grew up in that environment. Oh, yeah. And it's just, we haven't had a playoff win since I was what? I'm probably not doing the math right. 13, maybe? A home one since maybe I was 10? I mean, it's been forever. And just hosting a playoff game at Ford Field and winning the North, something we haven't done in years. I mean, beating the Packers last year was our Super Bowl. <laughs> but when we really start winning, this is going to be just fantastic. And that's it, just little by little. And then it just spirals from there. More players want to come, want to come, more free agents. But like I said, everybody is pumped. And when you get that winning mentality going, it's hard to stop it. You are so correct on that one. Uh, Megan, if somebody's listening to this interview, uh, maybe they want to check out the Uperman Bar and Grill, or maybe they just want to follow your adventures online. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the best way for them to connect? Um, Uperman's Bar and Grill is on Facebook. Um, I'm the one that does all the posting for it. So you'll see a few Lions things, but mostly our daily specials, things like that. Um, just going to Uperman's is kind of like attending a Lions museum. We have the Super Bowl tickets you want up on the wall. We've got photos. We've got news articles, all sorts of great stuff. Okay. And uh, Megan, thank you once again for being on the show today and sharing your story. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. And for our audience, you can always roll on over to TotalMichigan.com, click on Megan's interview, and uh, get the link that she mentioned above. We'll see you next week when we talk to another ordinary Michigander doing some pretty extraordinary things. We'll see you then.